If the VTR is equipped with editor or edit tech, edit timing should be checked. This will also be necessary each time the video input is changed for editing from a new sync source. Introduce the input to be used. If it is from another recorder, this recorder must be playing back in full automatic servo mode. Turn on the editor and edit tech if present and put the VTR in full automatic servo with head override on. Controls and meter for adjusting edit timing are at the bottom center of the InterSync electronics panel. Older recorders have a red push button just below the meter. Later models are equipped with a rotary switch. To check playback or horizontal phase, push the button or select horizontal on the rotary switch and adjust the horizontal phase control for a center reading on the meter. To adjust record timing, turn the selector switch to record phase and do not operate the push button if present. Start the VTR in playback of the material to be edited and once the machine has locked up, adjust the record phase control for a center reading on the meter. To check the accuracy of this adjustment, make a trial insert edit in a pre-recorded tape, ingoing and outgoing edits. Rewind the tape. Select MTEC error on the A-scope. Turn the editor and edit tech off and put the VTR in the play mode. Observe the A-scope display during playback of the edited portion. A good edit will show little or no upward or downward shift of the display at the time of the edit, indicating that the error is well within the correction range of Amtec. If color is involved, we must also check the phase of the splice to determine whether it agreed with the existing material. To do so, turn the A-scope selector to color tech and play the tape back again. There should be little or no vertical shift or breakup of the display at the edit point. If there is, recheck timing and attempt the edit again. The last step to be covered is system color phasing. The system being demonstrated in this presentation is interconnected in the following recommended manner. The output of the video monitor switch panel, which normally terminates at the pulse cross monitor in the recorder, is unterminated and looped through the A channel of a vector scope and terminated at a color monitor. Local color bars are applied to the terminated B channel of the vector scope, which is triggered by external 3.58 megacycle and operated in the external phase reference B phase mode. The input signal of the local color bar should be checked to ensure correct color phase and amplitude. Saturation, as viewed on the waveform monitor, should be 75%, with chroma at 100 divisions. Phase is checked on the vector scope with burst falling at 180 degrees and individual color signals in the proper small boxes. The color monitor must also be correctly adjusted if this setup procedure is to be effective. To accomplish this, turn off all three color screens and select the setup mode on the monitor. Turn on the blue screen and adjust its individual control until a horizontal line is just visible. This is the cutoff point for blue. Turn off the blue screen and repeat this process for green and red. Select the operate mode. Select mono. Adjust the green and blue gain for optimum black and white picture. Select color operation. Turn off the red and green screens. Adjust the phase control so that alternate vertical bars at the top of the picture have equal intensity. This ensures correct phase adjustment. 
Select preset at chroma control on monitor. Turn the blue screen off and the green screen on. With the brightness control set high, adjust the chroma cal control so that the three vertical bars at the upper right are of the same intensity as the reference black signal, which is directly below them. Having determined that the input color signal and the color monitor are in correct adjustment, record approximately two minutes of NTSC color bars. Rewind the tape. At the burst selector switch behind the front panel of the color tech chassis, select tape burst. Set the proc amp controls for unity and select output at the video monitor switch panel. With the recorder in playback, adjust color phase control on the color tech front panel so that the colors from the VR2000 output on the A channel are superimposed on the local bars on the B channel. Check burst phase and if not correct, Pull out the proc amp chassis and adjust DL1 on board 19 to place burst in the correct position. That is, superimposed on input burst. Continuing playback, select reference position on the burst selector switch on color tech. Observe the position of burst on the vector scope and correct if necessary by adjusting L2, the tunable inductance adjacent to the burst selector switch. An A-B comparison of tape and reference burst should now show no difference in phase. Finally, burst level must be set, both in the tape and reference positions. With the machine at rest and an input of NTSC color bars, adjust the demodulator video level control for one volt peak to peak at the color tech output. The waveform monitor should now indicate 40 divisions of burst. Select the tape position on the burst selector switch on color tech. And with the proc amp in unity, observe the waveform monitor at output. Burst should occupy exactly 40 divisions. If it does not, adjust R5 on top of the proc amp control panel until the correct reading, 40 divisions, is reached. Select the reference position on the ColorTech burst selector switch. If burst at output has changed, adjust R6 adjacent to L2 behind the ColorTech front panel for exactly 40 divisions. An AB comparison between tape burst and reference burst should display no difference in burst amplitude at output. The VR2000 is now ready to record, playback, and edit color pictures of optimum quality. Foreign tapes, that is, tapes recorded at other locations, may require a standard readjustment procedure for satisfactory playback. Put the recorder in the play mode on the pre-recorded color bars before the program material. Adjust tracking for maximum reading. Check audio playback for a meter reading of zero VU on test tone. If equipped with velocity compensator, turn it on, select velocity at the A-scope, and adjust guide height for minimum velocity error. If there is no velocity compensator, adjust guide height for minimum velocity error as seen on the picture monitor. If equipped with autochroma, turn it on. Adjust burst ratio for correct burst and chroma level as seen on the waveform monitor at color tech out. And adjust the master equalizer on module 17 so the chroma display is centered on the A-scope at the chroma position. Check burst phase for correct 180 degree position on the vector scope. Cue the tape for the appropriate run-up time before the start of the program. These procedures, if adhered to as standard practice, 
will ensure optimum results in the performance of your ampex videotape recorder